Okay, again, we said fresh food compartment 37. We said freezer compartment zero, plus or minus three. What, what kind of uh, equipment are we using to get these temperatures? I said it was 55 and 32. What are you? What else can we use? What else can we use? Some of the have the the K K type couple, thermal couple with the pigtail. Have you all seen that? Yeah. Okay. So we never use our hands. I see guys do it all the time. What the hell is that? To feel? Oh, it's not cooling. It doesn't feel cool. Uh, what is that? We, we don't play those games. Let's continue now. We open up the freezer. Ice bucket all leaked out. It's a mess. Everything. We didn't even see a fly fly here because he don't even respect the cold. <laughs> so now we say, oh God. We go when we open up that freezer door. It's a side by side. What are we listening for in that freezer door? And what's the name of that fan? And what's the purpose of this evaporator fan? And what is the evaporator? Move the heat, okay? So now, oh, and oh, we hear it. And ain't no doubt about that, that's not the problem. You say, dang. All right, you look at the back of the cup, evaporator cup, and you pray. You praying that you see some frost back there. Because if you do, what is that? Uh, issue. And what causes defrost issues? Uh, I'm going to start calling on people now because I need to start seeing who's paying attention. On the, it, it, let's just go along with the scenario that this is an older style, Jet Air. But it's a side-by-side, -side, but a big one. Built in. Compressed up top. Old school style with a defrost failure, what would we look for? What would it, what, what would be some components in play that we would look at? Thermostat, the heater, and the timer. Sometimes the timer What thermostat are you referring to? The defrost thermostat. The defrost thermostat. Okay. The, the timer and the heater. What if this was a newer style unit? This one has computer control. Not you anymore. You. This one has a new computers, touch screen, an inverter on next to the compressor. We all spoke about inverters, right? We don't need refreshing on that. Okay. The inverter, the inverter we said was the was the box. Can you get one? We, we said that, okay, in the most simplest of terms. When we plug these refrigerators into the wall, these ref these receptacles give us how many volts? Just in now, just in. How many volts did these receptacles give us? Uh, 120, I'll take that, 120, right? Well, this receptacle, what it does is, if you notice here, it'll say that it'll give you an input. The input voltage that it's receiving is how much, based on that platform? And what is the output? Okay, again, in the most simplest terms, it just boosts it up, you know? So, that compressor may not necessarily run at 240. It can run anywhere in between that, 120 to 240. You may test output voltage, get 175, okay? But that's what an inverter does. And I'll give you more training on that in today's later class of schematics. Okay, we'll talk about that, you and I. So, in, in this newer styles, we said, what are we looking at, sir? Control board and uh, defrost thermistor. Defrost thermistor. Now, you, sir, what is a defrost thermistor? Uh, it's a uh, um... Somebody help him out. Yes, sir. It, uh, it senses on the, uh, the temperature. Like that. Using what? It starts with an R. Right. So it's resistance. It uses resistance to the temperature. 
attempting to communicate that to the board. It's a sensor. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a sensor that talks to the board. Okay? So this sensor, they place it specifically on the evaporator. Okay? Its purpose is for the defaults, for on and off. It determines when the evaporator coil is too icy or too frosted up or it's too cold. They'll say, hey, hey, relax. Maybe we need to go into defaults. Let's warm things up, right? right. But that's not our case, guys. From that evaporator grill, I see little holes. Does everybody know what the, when I say grill what I mean? The cover itself has little holes in it, right? Everybody knows what I'm saying? The evaporator cover? Gee, look at the cover back there. You see the holes? Yeah. Well, on the older ones, the holes were a little longer, right? So you can actually see the bottom portion of the evaporator coil. Silver. Bone drop. Oh, boy. You still got hope, though, because the... Our diagnosis isn't done. We need to look at our condenser fan. And where would that be located? And where would that be located? Interior or exterior? Exterior. This is a built-in with everything up top. Okay? What is the purpose of the condenser? And here you are thinking, oh. I'm gonna get me a dirty coil, charge me a nice service coffee, and I'm gonna get home early. But to your behold, the customer took the cup off. They watched YouTube. They ain't watch me. They watched some other Yahoo. <laughs> but they took it upon themselves and they vacuumed it up. So it's not that. And the condensers. The final hole is what? Now you put your hand on it to see if it's running. You can't keep your hand on it more than a second. Tops. At that point, you sit there. That's it. Step one of this operation, guys, is we're going to tap into the unit. I said it yesterday. We're going to tap into the unit, right? When we tap in, what are some important things we want to look at when we put that piercing valve on? What is important of the most important things that we do? How do we do that? What are some things that we must make sure we do? Back out, back, back in. Make sure, number one, we use the right collar. If it's one quarter, it's five sixteenths, but that thing must sit on there snug and tight. There could be no wiggle, no jiggle, no rattling. Tight, okay. And then what? What? What part of the compressor are we gonna put that on, sir? The service valve. Process stub, service stub, different strokes. But we all know what we mean, right? Now we're gonna put it on with the right collar, the center screw. We're gonna make sure is it in or out. Who wants to go in? Maybe he's wrong. I would say go in first, pierce it, then you come out to so you know what you're reading. Okay. <laughs> no, that's not it. They will all right. What what it is is yeah, out. Because look, as we begin to torque these three screws, right? That 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 back piece here, right? It has that little guy right there sticking out. So if we push it in, that needle's out. Now, as we start tightening screw one, screw two, screw three, it's gonna the needle's gonna pierce first before it seals. And then because it doesn't seal, you got to get free on everyone. So the most thing we want to do is first make sure we have the right sleeve collar, make sure it's tight, and as we tighten it, are we doing... Wait, ah, I was going to pick on somebody. 
We do a star pattern. A little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, until that thing is tight. Now, I've tried to think I could do it tight, tight, and what I ended up doing was I tightened it so much, I started seeing the suction of the process line actually bend. Now, whoa, 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 whoa. Because I ain't want to bend and, and, you know, break the tube. So don't go crazy with it until it's snug. Okay? Sure. We all know what snug is. Sure. Sure. No movement, no this, this is your investigation. You mess it up if you want to. Do it right. Shh, 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 shh. And so you. Okay, I'm good. Now, we're going to back this. Well, before that, we're going to hook up. What color, what color gauge are we going to hook up? To it. Oh, is he right or wrong? I could be lying because he was paying attention. We're going to hook up our blue one, right? Are we going to have our manifold gauge closed or open? Is he right or wrong? I didn't hear any opens, any opens in the building. We're going to have it closed. Once this thing is closed, right? Now, <clears throat> we're going to tighten on this guy. Now, while it's tight, is the job done? No. What do we have to do? Back it up. And what's going to happen? It is in our compressor. Is it running or off? I forgot to mention this back. Let's say it's running. We have to do this test with it running. Okay? Now we've tapped into the system. I've mentioned the four most common failures associated with seal system problems. Can you give me one, sir? I've given you guys four of the most common seal system failures. Oh, okay, okay, yes. Um, give me one of them. Even, no, no, no. Give me one of the most common ones of a failure, the seal system. Um, low temperature, low, uh, low failure. What's that called? Um, Trisha. No, I'll take restriction. In fish, in fish, in fish, no. When it's low on freon, we said that that's called what? Low charge? Low charge. Or undercharge. Undercharge, under low charge, it's not up to specs. Right? The cause of that would be that there's a leak somewhere. So at one point it was at at temp, I mean at, at, at proper charge. But because of that leak, now the the PSI has dropped, so the unit is undercharged. That's one failure. Can somebody give me another use, sir? Restriction. Restriction. What is a restriction, Gary? Uh, restriction is locking that way. That's a good one. Blockage in the cap tube, but anything. It could be anywhere. It could be in the condenser, Yoda, whatever. But any, any restriction in the system, okay? That's one of the most common. Okay, can somebody tell me another one, please? Uh, uh, failed compressor. Inefficient compressor. Yeah. Failed compressor. What does that mean, sir? Failed compressor means the piston valves on the inner or the resistance of the windings can be bad and grounded out. It's not seen properly. The valves on it. Compressor is not Grounded. The windings touch the ground. What is the test that we do for that? Open winding. Gene, the, the compressor windings, you know, the windings, the electrical windings, it breaks and it's touching the actual metal. Now it's grounded. How do we do the test for that? Somebody help them out. What's the first thing we're going to do? Oh, you scratch, 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 scratch the surface of the compressor. Remove the paint. Remove the paint until you see it shining. What are we going to put our ball meter on? You, sir. Uh, Come on. I'll take that. Continuity. I'll take that. I know what I'm going to I'll take that. Continuity. And what is the sign of that? On your phone meter. It's always a little. The audible one. The little, little curve and the other curve, right? Right here. 
So we got we got ohms that looks like this guy, the horseshoe, and then continuity. The order will chime. What is the difference between the two? One has a chime and one doesn't. In electrical terms. So purposes, it's purposes. One's giving you continuity, one's giving you the actual nice And tell me the difference between those two words. What is continuity and what is resistance? So continuity would be to check an electrical path between one point and the other versus um, um, ohms would be checking the resistance of a, of a load. Correct. Did everybody hear that? What continuity tells me is that from point A to point B, I'm okay. What resistance tells me is exactly what's going on and how far and how much resistance I have from point A to point B. Everybody with me? And that's the difference between the two sides. These two is your best friend. When you go out there and you have open fan motor, back there, mister, this one's gonna be your friend. Okay? Uh, we went off on the tangent. Okay, compressors. All right, so we checked it. We doing ground now, right? So we go on with it with, with the with the compre with the or a voltmeter on continuity. We're putting one lead on one terminal, one lead on the uh, no paint, the exact hole of the compressor, right? Are we supposed to hear continuity? Yes or no? You? Yes or no? Are we supposed to hear continuity? No. Is he right or wrong? Okay, okay. I got some rights, I got some wrongs. Let me, let me, let me do this test. Let me do this test. Let me do this test now. Let me do this test. This is an excellent tool. Excellent too. These little banana clip, alligator clips, they're excellent. Because your hands move around, they dance. This doesn't. You put it on one and you back away. You make sure before anything, you turn your voltmeter on. How I do that is beyond. Even if I try to do that, it wouldn't do it. It would year. You put your voltmeter, first test you always want to do. You put your both meter. Number one, as soon as you turn this machine on, you put them together. And you should hear that. That's the first test. Why? Because this thing is in your tool bag. It's bouncing in the truck. And you don't notice, but a screwdriver bumps up and this red one comes up just a little bit. Just a little bit. And I hear you go to the compressor. Ah, it, it, <laughs> and you go to the compressor. Oh, I did a shield system the first one. And it wasn't even that. <laughs> you understand? First test you want to do, always. Now, we go to, to one pin to where we scratch the hole. Do we hear B? Yes or no? No. Who says yes? Okay, I got a yes. Who says no? Come on, where you at, bro? There's no neutral here. There's no neutral. What's up, bro? Choose a side. No. No? So I got all those one yes? Okay, write this down. You're not supposed to be If you do, that means that the winding has went and that now it's touching the actual frame and it's giving you continuity. That's a bad yeah. But so you're not supposed to hear. If you're listening to my question, you're not supposed to hear. Beep. Right. You're not supposed to hear. Okay. And you're supposed to go on all three. Yeah. All three. Okay. All, so all check three. Check my three. And you do hear, uh, hear that voice. That's giving you 100% that question back. Yes, sir. Yeah. So just grab right. That particular line you was grabbing. Yes, sir. Right. At that point, common? we get rid of it. Right. This is the most common? It happens. We have one in here that has one. There was one in here we have for testing. I think we have one. We do it away, but we have one. Listen, let's get back to the seal system. Come on, we almost done. Listen. Now, we tapped in, right? So we said already, we're going to have one of four nightmares. We said an inefficient compressor. Who said it? We said a restriction. And we said it on the charge, on the charge. You beat me to it in overcharge. What is this in overcharge? You said uh, somebody might have worked on it before and they put too much uh, refrigerant in the system and they overcharge.
are. Or the fact that we who knows. But the unit itself has more than it's supposed to. How do we know how much, where can we find the information on this unit? On the label. On the label. You knew that, Gene? Right? So now, we know what we're looking for, one of these four nightmares. So now, I'm going to give you the dilemma, and you're going to give me the solution. And we'll go through all four. But the first one is, you tap in, and you get a PSI reading with the compressor running of 50 PSI. Is that a good compressor? Yes or no? But it's supposed to be six. I didn't say all that, bro. I so just no. said, is it a good compressor? No. Yes or no? No. Is that? Does anybody think that it's a good compressor? I'm gonna say it again. With the unit running, we tapped it, and our manifold is giving us a PSI read of fifty. Is that a good compressor? Yes or no? Do I have any yeses? Let's start with that. I don't have one yes. I'll tell you yes. Talk about it. I thought you were going to get me one. Go ahead. We were supposed to have. OK, explain why now. Tell me why. To me, the question is kind of inconclusive. Go ahead. Maybe I'm from New York. I got an accent. Maybe I'm from New York. It could be that it's that, I mean, you're tapping yes, but I um, mean, what is operating PSI supposed to be on a refrigerator? Let's go back to our fundamentals. Remember day one when I had this stuff up? I told you, write it down. What did I tell you operating PSI should be on the compressor? On what side? On what side? So what should the low side be? So if we have 50 PSI with a running compressor, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Let him talk now, let him talk now. It's a bad thing. bad thing. It's a very bad thing. At that point, you know you have an inefficient compressor, right? Okay? When, with the unit off, you'll get PSI readings of about 55, 60, you know, somewhere up in there. And then when you turn on the unit, your manifold gauges will start to separate. One will begin to go low, and one will begin to go high. You with me, bro? Now, if, the, if it doesn't do that, then that means that probably that piston ain't working, and valves is jacked, whatever. But mechanically, it's failing to do what it's supposed to. And that's circulate free on throughout the year. It's okay. You, I like that you stood on your own, though. I hate people that just listen to Yeah, I probably would do. No, no, I like people to say, no, I, I feel like this. I like those guys. Because you learn them. You learn them. Okay. Now, inefficient compressor. Step one, what are we doing? And what's that called? It starts with an R. Yes, sir. This, this is if you are in that. You want to you? Assuming you got the, you, you sat there, and you gave them the Yeah, you told you me to You got a to do the work and you have the parts. Yeah, you know. Then <laughs> the back will follow. This is where you say, hey, this trip down here is going to pay itself so off now. This is my first time to pay that, that loan back. Let's go. On that built-in bad boy, shoot. Lord no, man, it's probably a weird configuration. It has framing on it from the 80s or 90s. They don't want to get a new one. Uh, 1900, I'll just go for everything. A new compressor, filter drive, labor, it works. Some people may say that's successful. Some people may say that's too long. In my area, that'll work. So, we're past that now. 
We went over to our parts distributors, got the parts. Shout out to Encompass and Marco. They're my two, my two good friends. Let's add that to the video. I'm going to upload this to YouTube. All right, so now we got the approval. We're back here. We got all of our stuff. We're, we're recovering. How do you recover? What is recovery? What does that mean, G? Tell me what that means. Without, without lying to me, in honor system, does everybody remember that lecture that Rick gave on how to do that? Recover? Yeah. How, how deep into the vacuum do we bring? And then once we're there, for how long don't say it? For how long do we say it? How long do we say it? you say you bring it first, you go at the chin. And then um, CO2 goes back up. And the next one will be a 30. Uh, a 30. 10. As long as it stays there for 30 minutes. No, nah, not even. Not even. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Good to go. As long as you don't see it rising. You know what I'm saying? So now we did all that. We the units free of free on. Now what do we do? Step two. What do we do? Say again? We moved the We did that already. We already put already to go ahead and we we in the fire, champ. We in the trenches. How do we do that? Okay, and we're going to take out two, two, two copper tubes. What are those copper tubes called, sir? Uh, distribution line? Distribution line? Discharge. Discharge. And where does that go? That goes to the uh, Is he right or wrong? He goes to work. This one? Yes, he's right. You sure? You know, you know they might be all the way wrong. I'm looking for the hero that's going to say, nah, man, it goes here instead. Is they right or wrong? Huh? Sir, sir, you said your piece. You said your piece. Anybody, discharge. Where does, it, where does that go? Sir, you, you. Come on, where does that go? Discharge. Yeah. Now that one, that two, that two in particular, is it thicker or thinner than the than the two? which 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 thinner? Any do I got any thicker? One more time. That come on, bro. Come no, on. sorry, I'm clear. That two, the two tubes that we taking out the compressor, the discharge is it skinny or thicker? Good job. And what's the other line called? You sir. Good job. And what is the purpose of that? The suction line? Yes, sir. To um, refrigerate the scum from the evaporator. Is he right or wrong? Correct. Okay. Line. Good job. So we took our two lines out, right? Now, these compressors have little apparatuses on the actual lugs themselves, the, the lugs. They're held on by screws, bendable clamps tabs, whatever kind of nonsense. That's just in the event that if the fridge tips over or anything, you know, the, the compressor don't go flying all over the place, you know? They have little shock absorbers too. What's the purpose of those? That's it. I saw the Okay, we took those two out now. We pulled the compressor out. We take out the new one. What should we look for in the new one? Yes. Those little rubber black gaskets. Now I'm gonna ride with you a little bit. You know, I try to avoid you because you seem like one of them advanced brothers. So now we're gonna put the weight of the shoulders on you, uh, of the classroom. We're gonna remove those little black rubber grommets, seals, whatever. Do we? Oh, what are we looking for? Noise, sound, your smell. Your audible sound that sounds like. Is he right or wrong? Yeah. Go, what's your question? No, what I was gonna say is we're also looking for the uh, caps on the end of the uh, on the compressor, the suction line and the uh yeah. the shock, uh, make right. sure there's no air or no debris or garbage that in there. Make sure they're intact. Okay. 
Did we bring a full to the conference? We should have. We time to change. Yes, sir. You got to change that new retractor. So now we took the old one out. We set it to the side. Definitely not on the floor. Because that thing's hot. We're going to set it on cardboard or rug or something, right? This is a high-end crib, right? Ooh. Now we take the new one out the box. We put it on the post. We put those little plugs on. Now we got these three different copper tubes. Tell me what we're going to do with them, sir. The first one. What would you do? Step what? The first one I would put the uh, process stuff, the access valve. Stuff, so and what is that for, sir? For, 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 for asset drop? Yeah. He for said he's going to put that on the process, though. For service to the person. Correct. Now, uh, yeah. just because you fly, come back <laughs> now. Don't come back. Now, you put that on, you got two more choices. Put whichever one is the furthest back, which is most of the time to such a line. Put that one on first. You gotta look for this, this thinner one, but where the thinner one goes, the thicker one, make sure it goes where the thicker one goes. Right? And this is a bonus question, you sir. The suction and the process share one common characteristic. What is that? I give a lifeline if somebody wants to help. Both of them on this side. You can use either one. Oh, yeah, you can change it. Okay, so now we we did all of our grazing. When we put in the when we put in this guy, when we put in our uh, what do we do here with this little guy inside of there? Why? Because it has a rubber gasket on it to melt. Right or wrong, G? What what do we do? This guy in here. Because remember, we're at the phase now that we're, we're putting our, our, our process, our uh, service valve onto our process stuff. Why do we take this out? Why do we take this out? Exactly, brother. Now tighten it for me, please. So we did that. What's the next thing we're doing? You, sir. Continue down to walk us through. So you got access to that one. Yep. The pressure's already in. Yup. Uh, your filter dryer. Uh, I'll, you could do that, but let, let's stay here at the compressor, bro. Mm -hmm. Let's finish the compressor. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, oh I see what you did. We did all this already? Yeah, yeah, okay, 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 okay. Now we're doing the filter dry. How do we do that? How do we do that? Uh, off are, you, are you just melting it out? Are you no, cutting it out? It should already have a little score mark on there, and that's where you can cut off that little bit and break it off. Okay, but the one that's on there, I'm asking. The one that's on there? Yeah, the old school one. Uh, uh, the old one? Oh, you, just, you don't want to sweat that one off. You want to cut it off. Is he right or wrong? Why? There's a hole in the pathway. Uh, it's a small air block. Because you'll get moisture and uh, not get some into the system. The one. We got our new filter dryer on. How do we know what size that we put it on. No arrows from this one, made in China. The smaller end goes for the capillary tube, the rest of the capillary tube. The side that has the, the valve on it, what side does that go to, G? The side that has the valve. Who got a, who got a filter drop? You got one. Where I got one? Right here, yeah. Okay. This, this, this guy here, it's independent. Where does this one go? This goes to the capillary? No, 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 no. This, okay. This, let me get a real one. No. I may be explaining it wrong. There we go. This one had a There we go. That's about as good as I can get without messing the lecture up. Okay. Where does this guy go? Up in there. Where does this guy go? 
What's it called? Uh, Don't say it. The the light that goes out from the compressor. Don't help it. No sir. No sir. Oh, the odor. Oh, the odor. Come on, come on, come on. The odor. The odor. Look, last. What do we say? We said compressor, right? Comes out, goes to the condenser. After that, it goes to the yoda. There it goes right there. Look, open in the flesh. Right there, come on. Look, right there. There it go right there. Right there. Right there. We put it right there for y'all. Cut it right open for y'all. No, not right here. Right here, right here, right here. Right there. I get that, but I'm going to show you on this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you see how it's going up? Oh, right uh, right. Your tongue is going out. After here, where is it going? Your tongue is going out. Okay. Do we need coffee? Do we need coffee? If I'm born, y'all, it's my fault. I'm sorry. Okay, after the filter dry, what is this called right here? Capillary. Ah. And then it goes, with that capillary feeds what? Evaporate. After that evaporate, this is called the? Okay, come on. You guys know what's going on. I just want to ask one thing. Yes. So literally, yesterday, he told us, or when you split it down, he said that the capillary tube is part of the low side. Yes, sir. Which is in front. Is it all just on both sides of the evaporator? Okay. Coming out the evaporator. I apologize. I just want to make sure in my head that it's. I was taught, bro, you cut my down the table and you cut it right down the middle. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, bro, you know what? Whatever, bro. I'm sorry. Bro. I just wanted to make sure because I don't want to get Have I been right thus far? Okay, so I'm hitting a whole run line. <laughs> okay, next. Where are we at now? After that, okay, so now we know where to put this uh, uh, filter dry. We know it's orientation, right? We put it on correctly. What do we do next, sir? Everything's all buttoned up. What's the next step? I don't want to say you are burning light. I'm not supposed to burn light. You're through the system to make sure you get all the contaminants out. Me, personally, that's what I would have did. And I didn't ask you, so I'm not going to hold you to it. But me, while I have that filter dryer off, and I put in that new compressor, and I have a, a service valve here, oh, I'm pushing nitrogen through all that. You know why? Because it's going to flush my, my high side and it's going to flush my low side. Right out both. You, before you put on the red bridge, right, before you check the leaks first. He didn't put 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 the leaks first. Now that the system is open, let's clean it out. Let's clean it out. You guys should be writing this stuff down if you don't know, if you have doubts, report. If you not even want to write, report. I'm uploading it in on YouTube at a minimum. There's no excuse. Because this is how you do it in the field. Yes, sir. Because if, if you don't do that, then you've already closed the system up. And then if it is, then you run in the it's not going to work. Then you got to open it back up. And you introduce it to the new compressor. And the oils in the new and compressor. New filter. So yeah. Yeah. Use that on there. Step by step, right? What we doing, right? Okay. So now we took the opportunity to push nitrogen through our entire unit and we patch it up with our filter drop. What's the next step, sir? So, so we're good. Now after we already uh, do that, we put the filter dryer, raise that in, now it's sealed. Now we're going to put nitrogen in, uh, 100 PSI nitrogen, and then we'll let it sit and see if we have any leaks we can soak up. Is he right or wrong? All right, okay. Good, good. Somebody's paying attention. Woohoo! That's exactly what it should be. It's going to take what, 90 for energy? Every unit on the model tag will have a design pressure, a high and a low. Never exceed the low, and you'll be okay. 
Somebody see it and point. And when you when when you see it, raise your hand when you see it. The PSI. Who who does not see it? Then please tell me what is it. What is it wrong? For which side? I'll take it. Don't matter. Yeah. One on three. We ain't going fast. One on three. I'll take it. Good job. So, and why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Why are we putting all this nitrogen in there for? Make sure that our braces are tight, that they're not leaking. Okay, now we we, we, we did a soap and bubble, and all of a sudden, on the condenser line, there's a real night, or the yoder line. It goes to the filter drop, another nightmare. Mm -hmm. More than likely, they're dissimilar metals. So they require a different type of flux, a different type of solder. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you see a bubble begin to emerge. You remember when you was a kid and you had a cold? I mean, a really bad one. And you ever sneezed and you did like just a big not a you see a bubble begin to emerge, right? Out the, what does that mean? What do we got to do then? Uh, it depends on where it's at. So if it's on uh, the surface anymore, you, uh, this is I told you where it was. I said it's either going to be at where we did our discharge or where our, our yoda means our filter drop. Because they're dissimilar metals. Now, it could have been in your state. It could have been anywhere that you did. We're checking our work. We're not checking somewhere else. We're checking our work. Right? Mm -hmm. You need a nice, very nice one. You some solder there. You address that. How do we address that? Define address that. So, we, uh, what we do is we check the tip and we miss a spot on the side. Yeah. So, then we would, uh, we can always, hopefully, you can get the side in there. But um, if you've got air coming out, you can always just um, close that spot up with your side. No. no. Why not? Say again. Stay with the story. Gotcha. You're going down hypotheticals and what ifs, and stay with us. <laughs> what do we do with the nitrogen in the system? No problem. EPA ain't gonna mess with us, right? We address that. We look at it with an inspection mirror. We put how much again, Gene? And we don't see that bubble this time. Now what we doing? What we doing? 
Come on, come on. Mm. You want to see the No, yeah. He said it last time. Oh, you like to go. You still have nitrogen in the system. Oh, okay. This has to be second nature, by the way. I thought you said we uh, just released Yeah, we did fix it. We did. We did fix it. And we also don't have no more nitrogen. No, we have to work the system again. Oh, we put the. Listen, listen. May I, may I, may I, may I, may I? You have a learning disability. You all got an accident. It's probably my fault. I'll take the blame. I'll take the blame. I'll say it again. We said the first time we saw a bubble, right? Then he said we released all of the nitrogen. We addressed it, right? Did I say that? Maybe I did it. We had patched it up, pop, 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 cleaned it up. Did it there? Did it there? We filled it back up. We did. We filled it back up. No bubble. No bubble. Now what do we do, the one? No, no, the water. No, 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 we still, we still have nitrogen in the system. We still have nitrogen in the system. We check the police. No, we are checking. We check the are checking. We check the twice. This is me and you. This is just me and my homie talk. This is me and you, bro. This is me and you. Okay. We filled it up right. with 103 PSI. And we ain't seen no bubble. Yeah, at this point, we check to make sure we don't have any Making sure they are fluctuating, like you know, about five minutes. Okay, yeah. Then after that, you release the nitrogen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's, all want, That's all I want, bro. That's all I want. You release the nitrogen. Now, the system is completely empty. It does not have neither nitrogen nor freon, but, but it has oxygen. What's our next step, sir? That, take that to trial, add on that, yeah, I'm gonna add on to it. or dispute it in a collective way. We want to pull it down to 30 inches station G, which is the same, like, as, like, which is the same as negative 14.7 PSI, right? So, yes, sir. Mr. Mr. Z said earlier that you can't really get to 30, he said 10 to 20 is about. Bro, you want to get to 30, bro. Just go with the book, bro. Yeah. This disease the man, and I'm sure right. if I ask him, he probably would say a different thing respectfully to what you're saying. Because I have sat and gave this class with him. Gotcha. And I'm sure he wouldn't have said that. I don't know if he heard it. Did it's anybody it. else hear that? You, you can't, you can't, you can't get it down there. Maybe I'll get it. He said you can't get it down to 30, but you need a micron gauge. Yeah, it's right. But you want to look for that, though, bro. You'll look for that on the gauge. Right. Oh, so he was saying, basically he was saying, the right line gauge, yeah. that'll tell you, like, for real, for real, if you have a, a leak. Yeah. And then he was saying, also, when you have your regular gauges, yeah. and then you have it in a vacuum, and he was saying you can get 10, you can get 20, maybe 25, but 30 is kind of like, uh, not well, so much. Well, you'll get it down there, bro. Oh. Very close to that. Very, very, very close, close to that. Right well, I mean, you yeah. heard Yeah, you'll get it, bro. Are we doing this vacuum to remove the moisture from the system or are we doing this? We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Mm -hmm. and now in class, but we're just running through the protocol. Mm -hmm. I'm going to the vacuum. Yeah. Is this the part we're doing this to remove all the moisture and anything from the system? Correct, sir. Because all those books said instead of doing that, we're waiting there half an hour to perform a sweep. What What was the sweep, guys? Just to add a little bit of refrigerant to go through it and then pull it back out. Yes. But well, what do we say about night about freon and oxygen? Do they mix? Okay, so let's take a step back and think about where we at in this uh, si simulation. We've said we let the nitrogen out, right? Now we said we pull, we 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 pulled the no, we didn't pull the back because he said that's not necessary because we already did the sweep. So now that we've done the sweep, we know we don't have no leaks, 
Can we add three on it? Just him. Just him. Yes or no? No. Why not? Because you have oxygen. So what do we have to do then? We have to pull it back. My question is, do you pull it back in? Is this the part where you're pulling it back in for 30 minutes to make it nothing in there? Yes, sir. You have to wait 30 minutes to it for Yes, sir. This is the part that I, by the book, says that. But this is the part that I have a big crap of tools, towels, and, yeah. and torches, and the wedge, and flares, and I'm taking stuff to my car, writing the invoice. Then I close my, my gauges. And why am I closing my gauges? Correct. And if it does do that, Gene, what does that mean? What did you say, sir? I say, what you're doing, when you close your gauges, you know, like you have a vacuum of minus 20. What's that? If you have a gauge of minus 20. You want to do it. You want to tell me if it's Right, and if, you, if it moves up, you're trying to see if it has a leak. No, sir. 
I should have not said them. I should have said who disagrees. Does somebody want to help them though? We're gonna feel now. We're gonna start feeling around. We're gonna put our hands on the discharge line. What's it gonna feel like? Blowing uh, air. No, this is this is what I said. Ah. We're gonna grab the discharge line. High side. I'm gonna feel uh, warm. Is he right or wrong? Well, he is right. He's right. Sir. Gonna, we're gonna we're gonna break now. We're gonna go back to the hands on, but be clear. Y'all know the theory. Y'all have no excuse. For those that didn't write it down, I'm telling you, you purchase or you're shooting yourself in the foot. Remember this stuff because you say it in the class. You're doing good, but this is how it works. This is how it works in real life. So after we're done, uh, what are your feelings on? I leave the problem, bro. Contrary to the popular belief, everyone I've ever been to has been like that. And the reason is because in case you want to service the unit, read pressures, so forth, so on, it provides easy access. Why do they give it to you with the uh, filters to drive? Zero things on it. Why did they you know, put it in? Some people are like, they say that. Pitch it off, bro. Pitch it off, bro. I'm going to pitch it off. I'm going to be an asshole, so Pinch it? I'm pinching. Bro, this is the piercing system. This is the piercing system. Turbo torch, oxygen set. Some people use uh, the rag. Some people use putty. Some people use the gel. Oh, this, whatever you Bro. Some people soap and bubble, some people use the blue cow, the blue gen, and we'll fight you over this stuff. <laughs> but I don't care. Get Just done. get the job done. Why don't you make sure that the wow isn't leaking and you shouldn't have a problem? Correct. Nope. I won't have no problem. <laughs> then the final step, you take, listen to me. This is the brother B final step. They don't teach you this in the books. I'm gonna teach you the secret. You take that voltmeter of yours that has that little capillary, that K type, you stick it in that freezer. I should have said this a little while earlier. And while you turn the unit on and you were just, you know, doing all your feeling on, you took note of the temp of the unit where they off, off, off. And if you feel confident in your work, like I do, because when I first started doing these seal systems, what I started noticing, you know, these is big numbers you're telling these customers, they want to have confidence that this thing is working. So what I had to do was I had to actually sit there and show them and wait, and they would be like, you sure, you sure? But what I did was I bought the voltmeter and I put the little K-type up in there. And what I would do is I will say, hey, man, look, you see the temperature now? Okay, I'm going to turn the unit on. And like I said, while I was putting the cover back and pushing the fridge back and, you know, picking up my tools, and that temperature was dropping. And I was like, look, she's already down 10 degrees. Oh, look, the floor, oh my God, who do I make the check out to? So it provided a a way for the customer to see them, to actually get eyes on, 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 on their investment and your good work. Yeah, most times you speak to them. Uh, wait about 12 to 24 hours and you'll be cold. Gentlemen, thank you. Gentlemen, I, 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 I hope that you guys took this simulation real. Let's spend the remainder of, after five, we're going to do a, uh, a, uh, private uh, schematic one, but stick around, continue doing hands-on, and um, what was I going to tell you? That's whatever you, who, who were y'all working on? Uh, we, was just finish, we was just finishing up putting on the uh, uh, filter dryer. Uh, finishing putting on the filter dryer? On ours, anyway. Who needed the 45 and who was working on